Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back to a continuation of this uh, uh, extraordinary and amazing series. And today we are going to bring to your attention the spotlight on some of the names of those who are the few, the brave, or maybe you can call them the fools, who have basically unearthed some of this material, if not even most of this material that Jay, his team, and also including myself, bringing it to your attention so that you are aware of what's going on in terms of the origin of Islam and any contradictions uh, and any holes uh, really in the Islamic narrative as opposed to these facts that are being unearthed. So Jay, can you tell us a little bit more about the names behind uh, this research? Yeah, and I, I, this is something that's absolutely important that we do this. I hear an awful lot of people say, Jay, we love the research you're doing. This is amazing what you're doing. Keep at it. And I have to keep on responding. It's not my research. I have done an infinitesimal little of this. This is really others who whose shoulders we stand upon. And that's why we need to give credit for all the stuff that you and I have been doing for the last two years. All the material on the Kiraat, all the material on the manuscripts, all the material on the Qiblas, all the material on the quest, all the material on that which we use in the historical paradigm, the historical critique, comes from others. So let's go ahead and let's look at the slide and let's start to put up some of their faces and start putting up the names and give them where credit, uh, give credit where credit is due. Let's start with the primary revisionist. Here you see Ignaz Goldzeher. He was the one that really got working in the 1920s on the Hadith, the fact that they're too late. Theodor Nechnaldodeke, coming out of Germany in 1930s. He was an expert in Arabic, Persian, and Syriac. When you go to Arthur Jeffrey, from Australia in the 1950s, late 1950s, he was the one that really helped us with the foreign words within the Quran. Looking at Joseph Schacht coming back out of Germany, was the one that really confronted Islamic law and said it's much too late. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist until the ninth century. John Wansborough, he, he considered oh. to be the He's father amazing. of of really of the revision school, the whole revisionist school, you'd say is must be placed at his feet. He's an American, though he did all his teaching at the School of Oriental African Studies there in London. And it was from his students. Look at fact his students are almost all in the, bo the bottom row. The the names of the people who have come under his tutelage just continues on. But he was the one that started this whole idea of looking at the Quran and looking at the textual materials that are in the Quran that just do not make sense in the seventh century. They could only have come from the 8th, 9th, and 10th century. And he was mocked, actually. Mocked when you're doing that, but now everybody has come on board with it. They realize this guy really knew what he was talking about, but he was way ahead of his time. Dr. Gerald Haunting, he was my professor when I studied there in the 1990s. I studied under him there at the School of Oriental African Studies. He was the last of the great few there at SOAS. No one has really replaced him since he left. And he was a student of Dr. John Walter. So was Dr. Patricia Corona. Dr. Patricia Corona, from Denmark, she um, came and was one of the primary students under uh, uh, John Wandsborough. She was a linguist. This woman could read and write 15 languages, all archaic oh, yeah. languages. Nobody has been able to do that except for Dr. Robert Hoyland. But she was the one that I got to know. And uh, when she wrote her book uh, at Oxford University, Mechantrite in the Rise of Islam, she got death threats. Had to leave. Oxford and then moved to Cambridge. And while she was a professor, head of department at Cambridge University, it was when I got to know her and she was the one that actually prepared my debate for me with Dr. John Badawi in 1995, 26 years ago. I went to her office. She looked at all my notes, which were really her material. And she says, that's a good point. Why don't you say this? Here's a better way to say it. I'd throw that out, but here's another thing you can put into it. By the time I'd finished, she'd give me 10 major uh, criticisms, historical criticisms. And I remember at that time I turned to her and I said, well, why don't you do this debate. This is your material. You know better than anybody. She says, because I don't have the freedom you have. Mm. I have a chair to protect here in Cambridge University. I cannot say what you can say because you only have one uh, uh, person that you're re uh, held accountable to, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And she showed me something that I realized, and the penny dropped at that time, that we have a responsibility, you and I, others, who are now, I will show you when they come up, we have a different responsibility than they do. Let's go on down to Dr. Andrew Rippon, also taught by Dr. John Wansborough from Canada. And he was the one that took the 7th and 8th century and explained it 
in layman's terminology so that we can understand it so that people like us can then can communicate it. Dr. Robert Hoyland, I can't say enough about Rock Dr. Robert oh, Hoyland. It's amazing. Amazing. This, this guy reads and writes 18 languages. I remember seeing him in his office. I went to see him there at Oxford and he was the one that wrote the the standard seeing work that Islam most of us are using. Other side, yeah. That has become the classic yeah. work yeah. that was written in 1997. <laughs> We're right. talking about almost 24 years ago. Dr. Yehuda Nevo uh, who, who is the, probably the world's expert on the earliest Islamic, uh, uh, Arabic, not Islamic, Arabic inscriptions. In fact, nothing to do with Islam. And none of the, uh, all of these people are saying there's nothing to do with Islam in any of the 7th and 8th century material. Dr. Norman Calder, who is also a study a student of John Wandsburg, again, like shock, unpacked Islamic law and showed, like shock before him, that in the 1990s, he was saying what Joseph Schacht was saying in the 1950s and the 1960s, and that it you cannot trust Islamic law because it's much, much, much too late. And then we go to the German school and we look at people like Dr. J J Gerd Puin and Dr. Heinz Oleg. I've seen Derek Gerd Puin. I, he was the one that introduced me to the Sana Manuscript. He exactly. showed me pictures from and it. And I spoke with him, uh, you know, uh, over a year ago. A wonderful man, very humble. Very humble. Yeah. These are Dr. Hans, um, Heinz Oleg and Dr. Gerd Puin and Dr. Oleg were the three that were flown down in 1981 to look at the Sana Manuscript, mm -hmm. which is which is the manuscript that, that you're unpacking. Yeah. And so these are the guys that we need to thank for the manuscript material. And then we get to Ibn Warak. I'm putting him into this group. He should really be in a, probably in a group of himself because he is not a German researcher. Like these are all unique researchers. They're the ones who are you, you are researching each one of their craft and they're then coming up, uh, to conclusion. What Ibn Waddick does is he takes it in, and spreads it out to the whole world. Mm -hmm. and that's why we need to thank him for what he has done. He is the one that took all their material and then popularized it. Now, let's get to the new revisionists. So this is the new group, and these are all my friends. These are the people who are currently still working on this and getting it out there. Robert Spencer, you've had him on the show. I've had him on my show. I just had him uh, 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 talking to him. He's now just coming out with his brand new book, uh, Did Muhammad Exist? What's fascinating about that, he had to write that new revision because of us. Because of what right, we had exactly. come out. And we interviewed him, remember, when he was uh, going in through In July that? of last year, in okay. June, we interviewed him, and as a result of that, he said, I have to write a whole new revision. I'm going to have to update the whole thing. And you appreciate that, because that's, that's true scholarship. You don't stick to your guns, you're flexible, you're open for revising things, and, and you do the same. Whenever new material comes, you go ahead and make adjustments immediately. You have to make adjustments. Yeah. His book was written in 2012. This is now written in 2021. Just put that one and two, right. flipping around, and that's why it's now the second edition. He's going to have to do a third and a fourth and a fifth, because even as he sent me the book to read, I said, you realize there's new material that's even come up now that you need to add to it? So He just said, this is the frustrating thing about this whole historical critique. Dr. Bernie Powell out of Australia, a real good friend, has really helped me with the Kirat, all the Kirat argument. He is the one that has really have unpacked between the Warsh and the Hafs uh, that we'll be using in one of our, uh, another whole new series, looking at the Hafs and the Warsh. Uh, Dr. Dan Brubaker, I can't say enough about Dr. Dan Brubaker. I think one of the most courageous souls in our uh, uh, during our lifetime, he is now actually teaching on our MAPI course, uh, coming out of Veritas International University in California. He has, was the first to do what no Muslim had done. He was the first to look at the original manuscripts and looked for changes, looked for variants in the Razum, in the continental text. There's myself. I won't say anything about myself because I just have to put myself in there because... Well, fact, brother, I can say something about you. Uh, we thank the Lord for you, for your uh, how courageous you are uh, from day one. You've been uh, at the Speaker's Corner for 26 years. No one can do what you did. I, I don't even think I can do what you did. A lot of people will look at you and say, man, it's almost like you're committing suicide, basically. But praise God, your work uh, has been an inspiration to many, including our dear sister Hatun, who- And she's the one that really has me. taken on that yeah. and has really pushed it and pushed the envelopes like no one else I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Hatun Tosh, we have to give her credit for all the kira'at. Absolutely. Taking this to the world and put, holding it up there and forcing the Muslims to deal with it. You would have not had that interview a year ago had it not been for this five foot two girl, Hatun Tosh, who has taken over my ministry, has run with it and has gone much further than I ever did. And I, I, you know, I think we have to give credit to her because she is not only pushing the kid argument, she's pushing almost every argument, censorship, freedom of speech, you name it, she's doing it. 
Al-Fadi, you're next because you're the one that has really has helped the rest of us to get it out into the public sphere because of City International. Thank God that you're around. And see, you're such a unique player because you're the only one that I know that is actually from the seat of Islam. You have actually come out from where Islam began. You are Saudi Arabia. This was your religion. Like Hatun Tash, you're both converts out of it. But more than that, you're not hiding behind that. You're not hiding by like a lot of, an awful lot of previous Muslims don't want to show their face. You show your face. You want to talk. You want to unpack it and more you're taking the flack for it. I don't know how many times people have mocked you for the dress that you're wearing, which is your native dress, is it not? It is. It is. And you know what? I do it for my Muslim people because I love them and I want them to know the truth and it will be uh, uncharacteristic of us to hide this truth from them and claim that we are serving them. Okay. God bless you. And this is why we've had such a good relationship, because we work well, the two of us spelling off each other. I've got Sarah Lumger there. I, I put her there because she is the one that is doing so much work on slavery, on Islamic slavery. She is a descendant of slaves herself. Her mother has a degree on transatlantic slavery. She mm. has said, wait a minute, what about Islamic slavery? What about the whole, the much bigger slavery? And so that's why she needs to be there because she is also unpacking a whole other side of history that we have not dared to touch. And especially now with what's happening with BLM, the Black Lives Matter, we need to unpack this and say, folks, if you really believe that Black Lives Matter, why aren't you confronting Islam? Islam, what they have done with black people is more, much more horrendous than anything that the Atlantic slave troop. But that's a whole area that she, that we really bring in. You need to bring her on your show and you need to have her unpack it. And then there's Mel. And Mel from Sneakers Corner. I, uh, Mel ha was a friend of mine way back in the uh, 2000. 14, 15, he was, used to come to Speaker's Corner, but he was always so quiet. He'd always stay in the crowd. He'd come out afterwards and have coffee with us and eat with us, and then he'd fly back to his house. But he never really said much. I never really got to know him until I came to America, and then suddenly he started emailing same Mel, and suddenly I realized this guy is a real historian. He has been unpacking this material, and he's been doing it for years, and he's been going back to the earliest sources he could find. He has created a whole team around him, including Murad that you see there. Murad is one of his uh, the best uh, people on his team, and he and Murad have now created. Uh, they have a guy named Joel. They have a, a woman named Sarah. Uh, they have uh, another fellow that I can't I can't remember his name right now of, uh, out of India, and, and now they have just brought on Oldon. Odin Lafontaine, Odin Lafontaine out of France, who really came into this work because of the coins that I brought up last year. Mm -hmm. He has just come out from France with all of his coterie of friends. So these are the new revisionists. You're gonna see their faces. Murad can't show his face. That's why I just put up the picture that standardizes him. He's not permitted to do so because he lives in the Middle East. He must be careful because of the fact that they, he would be shut down real quickly if they found out and knew who he is. So those are the people we need to thank for. The people whose shoulders that we stand up and the new revisionists. That's the people who we're gonna be continued to work with. They're our colleagues, they're our friends, uh, they are co-religionists, and at the same time, they are unpacking what we are just beginning to do. All our, all we're doing, Al-Fadi, is getting it out there, making sure that others hear it. We are the spokesmen who are actually make it, popularizing it and communicating it so the others can understand it. Amen, and thank you. This is a very special episode, really. Now people know the faces of those warriors, really, that stick their neck out there and do this research. By the way, all of these names that we mentioned, they have no beef with Islam. Uh, they're not there to try to uh, attack Islam or uh, the ideology. They're doing their work. I mean, they're researchers. They're, uh, you know, some of them are just, uh, uh, you know, focused in specific areas and so on and so forth. But our job is to take the research and make this research available uh, for those of you who have no access to some of their material, maybe you don't know that they exist, you don't know about their book, you don't know anything about what they are working on, and so on and so forth. So this is why I enjoy doing what I'm doing with our brother here, and hopefully next time we are going to talk about yet another problem related to Mecca, and that's the geographical problem, and we will continue from there. And that's another person, Dan Gibson, of course, who have brought most of that to the forefront. And other material that we don't even, you haven't even heard of yet Absolutely. that has nothing to do with Dan. There's a lot of stuff that we have to unpack with the geographical problems. Wonderful. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone. This is Al-Fadi, over and out. God bless you. Take care.